Um, when this is what I tell young people a lot, because I, I want young people are the are the are the uh, energy that makes the country go always, and our job is at my age anyway is to to show them that they're going to win, because that's what young people get discouraged because they read all these terrible things going on all the time and think, oh my God. So when I was um, a freshman in college, uh, which was on how many years ago, um, a very long time ago, it was 1968. I had two African American roommates. Neither of them had ever been in school with a white person because they went to schools in Memphis and Charleston, which were segregated. I'd never been to school with a black person because I was went to a Tony prep school, and. That was the year Bobby Kennedy was killed. Ma uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated. Uh, the convention blew up having nominated somebody who didn't even run in a single primary. Uh, and there was a riot for a week. And if you had told us that, that 40 years later we were going to have a black president, we'd have told you out of here, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. And 40 years later, Barack mm -hmm. Obama was elected president yeah. of the United States. Mm -hmm. So the change has become, I mean, this is an extraordinary change. Uh, not only that, but gay people are allowed to get married. You weren't even allowed to say you were gay when I was in high school, and even, even college people didn't come out when I was in college. Uh, not only that, uh, but we now have 20% women in the Senate. We have women governors, which we hardly ever had. Um, not only that, but this year is the first year in American history where there are more children of color admitted to kindergarten than there were white kids. Mm -hmm. There is no mind. There will be, and everybody can now see this, partly because of the president and partly because of statistics like this, there, uh, we will be like California by the year 2040, 2050, where there is no majority. There are, in California, there are five minorities in order of population, white people, Hispanics, uh, African Americans, Asian Americans, and Native Americans. We're all minorities now. This is incredibly upsetting to people who did not grow up in fairly urban places where everybody sees everybody else every day and gets along. Um, it is, it, you know, conservatives are people who cared, and I, I don't, I'm not being catty about this, they care deeply about place. They, they need to know who and where they are. Uh, in order to feel complete. Uh, and it's hard for them. It's very <clears throat> frightening for them to have these changes. And they're deeply resentful. In this last recession, which was really the worst since the Depression, as most of you know, it was very, very bad. If you're 55 year olds and white, and you lost your job, you didn't get another one. Mm -hmm. Except maybe as a Walmart reader. Now, minority communities have known that forever. Mm -hmm. That's a chronic problem in minority communities. White folks haven't seen that before. Now they have. They are terrified. These are people who are afraid, and afraid people are also angry because they have no their their ability to affect their own lives, which we've all been promised. How hard we work is going to determine what happens to us. That seems to be going away. They're just as every time Trump opens his mouth and says something outrageous, people go, "Yeah, that's right. We've been afraid to say it." They are angry. <laughs> and then not only that. The Republican establishment says, well, you can't say that. Not because they believe it, because they know it's bad to win elections. And the other people say, yeah, he can say that. Yeah, sure he can, because I agree and I don't like you either. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what the Donald Trump phenomenon is. It's a phenomenon based on fear and anger. And uh, it's a dangerous phenomenon, a uh, very dangerous phenomenon. And that's why it's important to stand up. That's what I get back to Hillary. I thought it was fantastic. She said, Donald Trump isn't funny anymore. He's not funny anymore. It's time we all stop laughing at Donald Trump. He represents what he, it's not that he personally represents a danger to the country. The emotions that he's tapping into yes. yeah. are very, very dangerous in any country. Remember that Adolf Hitler was yes. democratically elected, <laughs> the Chancellor of Germany. Now, I'm not, I want to compare Trump to Hitler because I think you have to be really careful about doing that thing. But this kind of emotion leads to enormous destruction and thoughtless violence. And we have to stand against that always. Another point about 